a very good evening. Thank you very much for watching the Uganda Catholic Television. I am Sunday Gloria Aboach with the Thursday edition of UCTV News and straight uh, to our bulletin, the Inspector General of Government, IGG, Betty Kamia Olive Namisango, has expressed her intention to audit the 2024 National Population and Housing Census exercise due to contradictions in the final report released by the Uganda Bureau of statistics ubos now while addressing press ahead of the country's commemoration of the international ombudsman day kamia acknowledged public concerns over the census results and affirmed her office's commitment to investigating any potential irregularities with the with the aim of promoting accountability and combating corruption in public service on the third of this month the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, UBOS, released the inaugural Digital National Population and Housing Census Report four months after conducting the exercise. Meanwhile, a number of questions have emerged amongst the public after the Bureau issued contradicting statistics of some of the predominant tribes in the country. UBOS subsequently pulled down the contradicting report and openly confessed to have published erroneous statistics, something which compromised the credibility of the whole exercise in the eyes of the citizens. While speaking to journalists earlier today, the Inspector General of Government, Betty Oliver Namisango Kamia, expressed her office's interest in auditing the exercise, which costed the taxpayers over 300 billion Uganda shillings, as an effort to uncover any potential irregularities. I've also been reading in the papers the provisional results, the final results that had. Um, where the, pub, uh, the public had serious issues with them and uh, we shall definitely uh, get involved in auditing not only the amount received but also the processes that have been um, taken through. But I can assure you that when uh, the inspection of government speaks, they should speak with authority after, uh, after investigation. And so yes, we shall take interest and uh, we shall audit. According to Kamia, this shall not be the first time to go about this, as she alluded to the previous encounter with the same agents through which they recovered the whooping 1 billion Uganda shillings from UBO's staff. Uh, I think in the other financial year, 2022, we made UBO's staff pay back almost eight, was it eight billion or one billion? One, one billion staff whom we find culpable of misusing government funds, we made them pay back up to one billion shillings. And this is an interesting case. About the previous allegations of grand corruption and misappropriation of public funds at the Parliament of Uganda, she revealed that she's only waiting on the auditor general to finish his work and as well pledged that she will institute investigations surrounding the same. What they were complaining about, which is more important, the uh, corruption issues. We are then who asked the corruption issues. Yes, we are very interested in uh, what happened uh, or the allegations in Parliament. But as I explained to you, uh, the office of the auditor general was there before we were able to get involved, to go to involved. And we have a protocol that when one um, anti-corruption agency goes to a place, um, we leave them to do the investigations. So we, still, we are yet to, uh, to interrogate the report of the Auditor General. That is why we held back. Originally, we had informed the public that we were going in to investigate Parliament, but then we learned, after we received a formal letter from the Office of the Auditor General, that they are already in Parliament doing their investigations. For the past three years, Uganda's Parliament has been accused of being a warm bed for corruption, with MPs taking inducements to legislate and soliciting bribes to enhance budgets. This pervasive voice has not spared the office of the Speaker, which has resulted in two various anti-corruption demonstrations, leading to the arrest of over 100 youths in Kampala. According to the IGG's office, 
the country lost 9.144 trillion Uganda shillings, which is loosely 44% of its collected revenue, in a period of December 2023 and June of 2024. Joseph Kabari, UCTV News. The Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, in collaboration with the Private Sector Foundation, has reaffirmed a government's commitment to promoting women entrepreneurship nationwide. Special emphasis is being placed on supporting business women from less privileged subregions and refugee districts where loan costs have been reduced. Speaking at the Uganda Media Center, Minister Betty Amongi has urged eligible women to take a advantage of this initiative, noting that additional funds have already been dispersed to five banks to support the GROW project. Also, this project targets refugee areas as an affirmative action. Not only refugees, but both refugees and those in refugee us districts. So if you are a community where the refugee are, we are taking you as an affirmative action and the grant to support you if you diligently pay the half while the rest will get five percent if you are in a refugee host district we will give you a grant of eight percent then we also have other regions that has disadvantage we are giving them affirmative action where the poverty rate is high. This is Karamoja, Busoga, Bukedi region. These three regions, if you pay your loan half without default, we are giving you a grant of 10%. But if a woman performs very well and you pay a half of your money, the loan, without defaulting, we are, we are giving, they will receive a grant reduction in their loan of the value of 5%. So I'm, I'm appealing to the women out there that please pay diligently so that you will receive the 5% bonus whereby we reduce your loan amount and give you a grant Actually, the project pay 5% of the loan. We agreed with the banks to accept both movable and non-movable collateral. We all know very well that some of these banks we are using, like Finance Trust Bank, they have been lending to women for the last 40 years. And they have been lending small amounts, even as low as 1 million or 500,000. So we have women that they have lent money not just on land titles, where they have used movable chattels, like the TVs, the what. The only challenge that we are finding is that lending a woman money is not only about collateral. The women that have faced more challenges are women that come to the bank and they don't have any history. They don't have any history of their sales, even on the phone, or even on their banking, to show that they, they make some money. Now, the banks, once they rate these particular individuals, the risk rating becomes a little bit higher. But I have proof on file, even the names. The fishing community has been urged to work closely with law enforcement to promote economic transformation within the sector. This call comes in response to numerous concerns about the use of illegal fishing gear and methods within the community. The spokesperson for the Fisheries Protection Unit, FPU, Lieutenant Lauben Indifuna, made the appeal while overseeing the destruction of illegal fishing gear in Nakasongola and Serere districts on Lake Choga. We have been seeing here, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, His Excellency, Yorika Guta Museveni, emphasizing social economic transformation. And uh, one of the ways how we can create something in our people's pocket is by securing this lake. This lake supports a lot of people a good number of Ugandans and they usually we tell them 
the lake is not expanding, but the population is increasing. Mm. In case we don't protect this lake, we are likely to face a big challenge, unemployment and even eh, poverty will increase. Uh, we see in more investors, His Excellency emphasizing about the industrialization that we have reached in the stage of industrialization. That the industries you are seeing that increase employment opportunity to the younger youth. So if the fishermen or fishing community does not protect the legs, means we are fighting those industries or we are fighting our younger generation to be employed. So we call upon the fishing community to desist from illegal fishing. Let them practice illegal fishing by using standard boats, standard fishing gears, so that we can save our lake and uh, we solve an employment opportunity we have in Uganda. Operation is still ongoing on. Uh, we have spent days on Lake Choga, whereby we have dis disposed of some irrigators from Serere, today we are in Akasongola, and uh, there is other irrigators like in Ibuyende, Kawongo, eh? that's Kayunga, but we are waiting to get a court order. So that, and we shall leave here and we go to another lake like Arobat, but we, we don't say that we are very happy to be destroying this one, because this is the billions and billions of money. Hmm? So we, we continue sensitizing the fishing community to stop buying illegal nets. You find someone using PDM money eh, to buy illegal net, and at the end of the day, once you are arrested, you lose everything. We are going to take a very short break and we'll return with more stories. UCTV, good news for all. Welcome to Seeds of Success. My name is Rwanga Godfrey. Seeds of Success, we talk about business environment. If you want to be a millionaire, work for money. But billionaires work for wealth. Social affairs. Whom to blame via characters and talents? Is it tertiary institutions or humanity within the human beings? And other topical issues don't miss on UCTV, good news for all. Now, finally, on the local scene in our exclusive interview with Dr. Livingston Tewanyana, a renowned human rights lawyer and the founder, the executive director of the Foundation for Human Rights Initiative, he reflects on key moments that have shaped the human rights landscape in Uganda. His insights highlighted the significant periods that marked the advancement of human rights in the country with a particular focus on constitutional reform forms and decentralization policies. Nero Sende sat down with him and this is what happened. Dr. Sewanyana pointed to Uganda's independence as a pivotal moment in its history, marking the beginning of a journey towards self-determination and freedom from colonial rule. However, he emphasized that the true advancements in human rights came with the establishment of the National Resistance Movement, NRM government, in 1986. The NRM ushered a new era of governance, one characterized by the introduction of the 1995 Constitution of Uganda, which is widely considered a landmark document for its comprehensive provisions on human rights. There have been moments in our history when there has been excitement, when there was hope. Among those was when the Union Jack was lowered and the Ugandan flag went up. That was a time of excitement for many Ugandans. Actually, there was jubilation all over the country as the Union Jack was lowered. It was a time of excitement. It was a time of hope. People felt a sense of relief that the colonial administrator had left. They felt the country was theirs now, the resources were theirs, and they had a say on how they would be governed and how they would determine their destiny. That was a defining moment. The 1995 Constitution is a crucial pillar in the promotion of human rights in Uganda. It's enshrined fundamental rights such as the freedom of speech, association and protection from torture, which have seen become the foundation of human rights advocacy in the country. 
relief was when the NRM promulgated a new constitution for Uganda. In 1995, there was a sense of euphoria in our society that the past was gone. As the constitution of the Republic of Uganda was promulgated in 1995, handed over by Honorable Wapaka Bullock, President Museven, you could see the level of excitement of Ugandans. They had hoped that they had acquired what is called political nirvana. But that was yet to be achieved. Because the constitution as it was then did make provisions for checks and balances. It recognized the power of the individual. It spelled out very clearly that power belongs to the people. It provided for checks, term limits for the president, term limits for age limits. There were, generally, it was a progressive constitution. Another significant period Dr. Sewanyana highlights is the introduction of the decentralization policy, which shifted power from the central government to the local government units. Now, this policy, initiated in the late 1990s, was aimed at improving service delivery and bringing governance closer to the people. According to Dr. Sewanyana, decentralization not only empowered the local communities, but also enhanced their abilities to demand their rights and hold the local leaders accountable. There was also another defining moment in 1997 when the policy of decentralization was introduced in Uganda. It was a form of handing over power to the people. That now the local governments were in charge only for that power to be recalled. So those were all defining moments when people felt, yes, it's possible to achieve our aspirations. As Uganda moves forward, his message is clear. The milestones achieved so far must be built upon and the challenges still facing the country must be addressed through the collective action ensuring that human rights remain at the forefront of Uganda's national agenda. It is possible for us to reverse the trend if only the spaces can be created. It only requires political will to reverse this current trend in order to achieve the aspirations that the Ugandans have. Nora Osende for UCTV News. Thank you very much for watching. UCTV News still takes a break. When we return, it will be time for the Rome Reports. UCTV, good news for all. Welcome to Seeds of Success. My name is Rwanga Godfrey. Seeds of Success, we talk about business environment. If you want to be a millionaire, work for money. But billionaires work for wealth. Shosha affairs. Whom to blame via characters and talents? Is it tertiary institutions or humanity within the human beings? And other topical issues don't miss on. UCTV, good news for all. And the Rome Reports, being our last segment in our bulletin, ends the news tonight. I am Sunday Gloria Aboch. Do stay tuned to the Uganda Catholic Television. Good news for all. <laughs>